Well, earlier on, we got this mountain in, leaving the hint of white paper for the snow at the top. Uh, now that's dry, let's get on to the next stage. It's a clean brush, a number eight brush. Thin wash of cobalt blue and rose madder again, that shadow colour. Because this mountain at the left has also got snow on it. And I'm just going to bring that in. Flat white paper, though, won't look like snow. It will just look like flat white paper. So I've got to put a bit of shape into it with a bit of shadow like that. And perhaps strengthen the shadow nearer to the mountain in front of it. If I strengthen the shadow there, it will bring out that white on the one in front. Softening that in. Now the hill at the right hand side, I need a bigger brush for. I've got a number 10. Um, it's quite distant though, so I'm just I'm putting it in first of all in the soft grey that I made the clouds out of. That was cobalt blue, rose madder, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And this has got to look distant, so it's got to be that uh, quite a pale colour. Now as I work that colour down, let's put a touch more shadow into it so it gets a bit stronger and then I'm going to gradually introduce the raw sienna and burnt sienna. So the colour gets warmer nearer the middle distance. Okay, now while they're drying, I've got a small brush, a detailer, and a really dark brown mixture made of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And this is to put a little touch of detail into the hill where we have little boulders and cracks and crevices. It's just so, really, it's just so that it's not too plain and smooth. Light's coming from the left, so where I've maybe missed a bit here and there, I've got a little speck of white showing through a bit of dark shadow to the right of it. Makes it look quite convincing. Okay, now we've got that dark green mixture again. I think along here we want a few more trees and bushes. These help with the scale. Okay. Now I'm going to mix some colours now for the water. Now really the water, we're not seeing enough of it to reflect the sky, not with a huge hill like this behind it. So basically it reflects the colours of the hill. So I'm just going to take a moment to mix those again. We've got that raw sienna and burnt sienna. I need plenty of that rich dark green because the trees at the water's edge will definitely be reflected in the water itself. So that was Oriolin and ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna. We had that bright green in there as well, so I'm going to get more of that. That was Oriolin and cobalt blue. Because all these colours have to merge into each other, wet in wet, to, to, to get the effect of soft reflections in the water. You've got to have them all ready before you start painting. Just the time it takes you to mix some more colour is often enough for the background to dry and you lose that opportunity to paint it wet in wet. And I also want a bit more of the grey that is on the hillside. A cobalt blue, rose madder and a little touch of burnt sienna. Okay, that's all the colours ready. So before I paint anything, I'm going to wet the background with a large number 16 round brush. I'm going to try to leave a thin white line to separate reflections in the lock from the land. Now this brush is quite big. It needs to be because I've got to cover all this area fairly quickly. But because it's got such a good fine point, I can leave a thin line. Okay, and now the whole of this bottom area, which is still dry white paper, I need to wet that with clean water. Now I've got to put the colours in now, but I've got to bear in mind that this is now the other way around. So where we came down from that orangey brown through to the green, 
the green is now the first one with the origin brow, orangey brow coming second to that. So right across there. Now that little dry white line doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter if we lose sight of that now and again, so long as the viewer's eye can sort of pick it up. Okay, so I'm ringing that right across there. And then as that softened into the orange, so it does in the water. Taking care to make them blend. I don't want stripes of colour. It won't look authentic. Now I can bring that orangey colour. In fact, I need to strengthen it a little bit. A bit more of both pigments, the raw sienna and the burnt sienna. I can bring that right down to there. And then introduce a little bit of the grey as is on the hill. As we go up the hill, it gets a little bit grey. into there and then straight away I've got the number four brush and I've got that rich dark green that's got to appear as a reflection in the water so I want a hard edge where it meets that white line and then a soft edge where the reflections soften in to the background color now I've got to go quickly because you can see how this depends on its still being wet. It's not a mirror image, but it does basically echo the shapes above the water, and that's what I'm doing. They don't have to look like a perfect mirror image, but they do have to look convincing. The colour is just as strong as it is in the actual trees. Okay, and as I say, that white line is very important, but it needs to be very narrow. Even losing a glimpse of it now and again can help. Okay, let's put a little hint of blue into the water. I'm going to take some cobalt blue with a little bit of rosemary, a little bit stronger this time. I feel there should be just a hint of grey or sky colour in the water. And I've got to try and keep the brush strokes very level, very horizontal, and just across there. Maybe across at this side as well, just a, a glimpse of that grey blue. But I think it was just a bit too brown. And also by bringing the water, the colour a little bit stronger, right into the foreground, it does help to bring it to bring it forward. Okay. Now I'm getting the small brush again, the number two detailer, and I've got some opaque white here. I think there's one or two little finishing touches I can do to, to put a bit of life into that snow. Uh, this won't work, of course, if you water down the gouache or opaque white. The same thing, really. But if you water it down, of course, it's not as opaque. So I've got a damp brush, but I am dipping it straight into the tube. And let's bring a touch of white in across that point there. Now, I don't want to do too much of this because you can... You can overdo it. It's a case of adding a few highlights rather than actually changing anything. Just a touch more into that area there. This white is also useful for maybe suggesting a few ripples in the water. Um, let's try maybe across this area here. to get those nice and level and maybe across the dark there a final step now is to just take the half inch flat brush and just try to I'm just trying to blur the reflections vertically to give the impression of still water it's got to be very slight not too much because you can you can overdo this and swipe off a lot of the colour. It's just a gentle blurring of the background colour. So there's our finished picture. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.
Today I'm going to show you how you can add a bit more depth and interest to an acrylic painting. Now acrylic paintings are very often kind of left quite flat, um, more like the surface of a watercolour. But of course with acrylic you can really sort of go to town on building up texture and in my paintings to sort of finish them and give them a sort of professional look if you like I like to really sort of build up the texture in the picture and give everything a nice sort of glossy finish. So what I'm going to do I've got a little sketch I started here which is by no means finished but just to show you how I'd go into a picture and work up some texture I'm going to take a bit of the gloss medium and varnish here now just going to tip a drop of that onto my palette here over some of the paint I'm going to be using and that just gives the paint more of a gloss when I'm actually using it. I'm not using it as a sort of finished varnish yet, just trying to give the picture um, a bit more gloss. I've got a sort of uh, roughly textured area here in my picture and I'm just going to very quickly grab some paint. Now this is a bit unorthodox but I often use the end of a paintbrush in order to apply the paint to the canvas. Now you can use a palette knife of course and I will in a second but I actually like to use the end of the brush because at the same time as you're applying the paint you can also use the brush to scratch out certain areas of the canvas as well and depending how thick you want it you can really build up some nice densely textured areas in your painting. So I'm just showing now, using this dark burnt umber colour, how I might go about blocking in the dark tones in the foreground of my picture. And I'm usually restricting this kind of treatment to the foreground of a painting because that's where you want to kind of build up texture and strength, which helps with the impression that things are closer to us. Of course, if you want to use a palette knife, you can. So I'm just going to grab some burnt umber and just apply that with a palette knife. That gives you a more sort of dense and thick layer of paint rather than using the sort of end of a paintbrush. And I'm just using the flat of the palette knife and also taking account of the fact that I'm working on a canvas board which gives you some texture anyway. So just working that sort of over the surface of the paint. And of course you can scratch into that as well and play around with your textures. Now, one of the great things about painting is the ability to sort of blend things on the canvas. So I'm just going to add some yellow ochre just on the same knife. And you can, of course, blend colours together while they're still wet, more like you would perhaps with an oil paint. You can do exactly the same with acrylic. The interactive ones are great for this because they already have a very nice sort of rich buttery texture, more like oil paint straight from the off. So having that straight from the off on your palette also helps to build up sort of texture in your paintings as well. So I'm just using the palette knife to build up some nice thick textures. And of course you could work over the whole surface of the canvas using this technique, adding highlights to the sky, building up texture in your foreground. So don't be afraid to try this if you use acrylic paint. Don't think that you just have to leave it as sort of flat brush strokes. Don't be afraid to get a palette knife out or the end of your brush and really work up some texture in your painting. Just give it a try and it will give your painting a lift and a real depth as well. 